To register a new control panel, you can do it yourself, with a security company or the installer can do it himself. If the installer does it, it is the same thing, either from the installer application or from the web, just click on add panel and configure the MAC address here. In fact, here are some instructions with detailed pictures on how to do the first registration. For Ethernet, you simply open the cover, connect the network cable, connect the power and copy the serial number. When the UPROX logo is green, it means that it has connected to the cloud. Enter the MAC address and click on Add. If we want to add it via Wi-Fi, in this case we would have to connect via Bluetooth, as we are not going to have an internet connection. Then, simply, we go to the mobile application, which will take us through the steps here. We connect via Bluetooth to the control panel, which detects it automatically and at the end we configure and scan the Wi-Fi network and connect it. Once we have registered the control panel, which you can see is very easy to register, we can access any of them. For example, I am going to access my control panel and we are going to see the configuration step by step. First of all, we have to configure the parameters of the control panel. We can access inside the control panel and here we can see that we have a question mark with each of the options. We have a question mark for group configuration, firmware update and indicator light. At all of these points we have questions and these are little descriptions of what this configuration means. If you click on the question mark, here is a little summary. Here you can add or delete or rename groups or areas. So if I go in here, effectively, I can see all the areas I have, I can modify them, for example, this one here, I'm going to delete it. Or I can add more areas, for example, let's put area 20 systema. and it would be configured and now we would have Area 20 Systema. Here we have the name of the control panel, which would normally be the name of our customer, the subscriber, or whatever you want to identify this control panel, who belongs. Then we have the firmware update that we can select automatically or manually. If we select automatic, if a new update is launched, the control panel will automatically update itself. If we select manual, when there is a new update, we will get a message like this one and it will indicate us if we want to update the system. Indicator light. This light is to activate or deactivate the feedback of the control panel. The control unit has a green light on the front, which can be turned on or off. From this option we can turn it off and indeed this light has already gone out in my control unit. Auto cancel alarm, this would be the alarm length. We can auto cancel the alarm if we wish, at the end we can set it to 3 minutes, 1 minute, or just leave it on disabled and it will auto cancel the alarm until the user disarms. Then we have the GSM network, this is where we configure the APN of our operator, the access point. We simply click on configure, we can select manual, which would configure an APN automatically, Normally this works with the operators, which are not multi-operators, they are direct operators, such as Vodafone, Orange, Movie Star, etc. But if we have a M2M card, a multi-operator card, the ideal is to put manual and point the APN of our card so that the central can have internet via GPRS as well. Here we can put, I confirm the availability of an alternative communications channel, this means that I confirm that, if the Ethernet goes down, I will switch to GPRS. We save the configuration and that's it. We have the Ethernet that normally come from DHCP. Here we also have an explanation. We can leave it in dynamic DHCP, or we can set it static, in which we can set a fixed IP to the central. SIM card expense register. Here is if we want to see the monthly consumption. As you can see here it has been reset and here you can see that the traffic is 327 kilobits, it is reset every first day of the month. Additional information is if we want to add additional information to the central. Imagine that I am a maintenance technician and I have just changed the batteries in all the detectors. I can put here, first of all, which customer it is. It's like a tab that you fill in to have more control in the system. You can put what is an end customer, country, city, 
street, building. Where is this central and in notes I can put that technician X, the day 01 of 02. I have modified, changed batteries of devices, for example. Any notes, okay? In the end, these are notes that could be useful for us to have a record that the next technician who comes in can read and see what has been done. And this would be all for the configuration of the control panel itself. We have a special configuration here which would be the configuration to enable or disable sabotage, manipulation and tampering of the control panel. As you can see, practically everything is already pre-configured. So, here, the normal thing to do is simply to set the APN and little else. If we click on the information button it takes us directly to the manual, which is in Spanish. Well, they are really multi-language and it will specify step by step how to set up the control panel, graphically, the coverage, where to place the control panel, the different LEDs what they mean, and here we have a manual, let's say a quick guide, as well as the features and everything that the control panel can support.